Hi everyone, I wanted to make a video about Facebook um, and the title of the video is Is Facebook Really the Real World? And I've decided I'm not going to say um anymore so there will just be silence where there'd normally be um. Let's see if I can do it. So there's been incidents on Facebook recently where people have retreated and I just find the whole thing really interesting and fascinating because we've all done it. I think we've, everyone who's on there has probably done it at some point. There's been people who have said, I'm having a really hard time at the moment and so I'm going to be retreating from Facebook for a bit because I need some time on my own. And I thought, isn't that interesting that Facebook is now such a powerful, all-consuming mirror for the real world? It re reflects the real world for so many of us. We, It's almost as if if we don't get the validation on Facebook, then we haven't got the validation in life. I just find it really fascinating that it's got to that level where people including myself, will sometimes go to Facebook for validation or to ask a question or to share something. And then you think, isn't that interesting? I've done that before. I've shared it with my closest friends or my family. Isn't that interesting that it's this kind of mirror? It's this virtual real life that we use for so much. So this retreating thing I found really interesting that people would say I need time on my own I'm going to I'm not going to be on here for a while. So it's something to think about you know is Facebook your real life is Facebook your world do you have friends that you go and see in real life do you have things that you do in your life and ambitions and goals or is Facebook the kind of yardstick for success you know and I remember times in my life when I my life didn't have much ambition or direction and I would desperately go on Facebook for validation. I would share something if I didn't get likes and comments and love, you know, love me, love me. If I didn't get that on Facebook, it, then it didn't feel like I'd really received any love. It had to be out there. And I think maybe that's the power of it, is that it's, um, it's visible to others. We want the visible validation we want the social proof we want it to be seen we want it to be out there that so many people have liked our post or liked our photos or told us well done or congratulations I just think isn't that interesting it's really interesting and um, so it's an amazing means of sharing and connecting I think you know old school friends I haven't seen for 20 years family members you know, you don't always see each other. People are very busy. It's a nice way of showing what your kids are up to, you know, with other mums, other parents, seeing people growing up, seeing what you get up to, days out, exploring things. It's brilliant. But there's also, there can be a dark side to it because research has shown that people who constantly um, have the need for validation on Facebook, and particularly women, I'm going to say mostly women, because it probably is, mostly women who share lots of selfies, there's a link, there's a correlation between that and uh, body dysmorphia, and mental health issues. And I saw the potential, I can see the potential in it for me. And I, I'm a lot better than I was, but I did have dysmorphia looking back as a teenager. I still have mild issues with it where I don't like to look in a mirror. If there's other people in the room, I can just about cope with a mirror in public. I'd rather not look in a mirror in public. I see something different every time. I don't always see at the time what I may see later. I might see an awful photo of myself and feel like I feel hideous and I feel like a monster. And then I look back at that photo another time and think, oh, I look fine, I look nice. Um, so it's just interesting that we have, to, we have to be aware of the relationship and why we use Facebook. And if we... If we genuinely feel that Facebook is real life, if it happens on Facebook, it's real, it's our real life, then maybe that's something worth looking at. And the things that we do on Facebook, are they things that we do in real life? Would we unfriend someone to their face? If someone gets blocked, would we take action on that in real life? Would we 
go and take out an injunction against that person because they upset us or because we, we'd fallen out, we don't want to speak to them anymore. It feels, uh, I've blocked a few people, I've had people block me over the years, it feels like a very aggressive tactic, which is very strange because, it, again, it's really not real, it's a virtual thing. It's just a virtual quarantine almost, you know, you cannot see what this person's doing, they cannot see what you're doing. So I just find it interesting. And the last thing I wanted to bring up, just wanted to say is that don't forget we have a choice. We always have a choice, particularly with entrepreneurs. I found as I started to change my mindset three or four years ago, I stopped blaming external factors. That's something I could make a whole new load of videos on and probably will at some point. When you're in a mindset and maybe in a position in your life where you don't feel as if you have control over things, where you feel as if life happens to you and life is this awful scary thing and stuff happens and relationships are bad and life's hard and we have that mindset, well generally that's what, that's what we're going to attract because that's what we believe and if we don't take any control and understand that we can always take steps and we have some control over our destiny, we have some control over what we think, what we feel, what we do, because what we think and feel will always affect the action we take, which will then affect the consequences of that. It's always worth realising that we have control. We have control over what we look at, what we see, what we read, what we watch. The news, Facebook, if you're going to sit and read say the Daily Mail and you're going to read newspaper stories and you're going to base your view of the world on those stories, doom and gloom. You know, we know that negative stories sell. That's why newspapers are designed the way they are. Negative stories sell. Sensational, negative, fear-mongering stories sell. And that's why you don't see stories about wonderful, happy, lovely things which happen in the world. And those wonderful happy things are happening all the time we're just not told about them you have to go and look for them so just be aware we always have a choice and a decision what we feed into our bodies what we eat you know we don't go into a supermarket and say oh I, I don't go into supermarkets because I have too much junk in there well we have a choice you can go to the aisles that have the good food that we like you know the healthy stuff and then there's the aisles with the chocolate and the cakes and the pizza and we have a choice you know there's no one there holding us by the hand, forcing us. You have to buy chocolate, you have to buy cake, you must eat junk. Nobody's forcing us, we always have a choice. And if we have a victim mindset where we believe that, oh, I, I, you know, so if we don't take responsibility and we say things like, oh, I'm just, I'm a comfort eater and I, I, I just eat rubbish and I, oh, I just watch telly because it's all I've got, really. It's all I've got to look forward to. Well, if we completely take that choice away, then yeah, that's how our life is. We have no choice because we're choosing not to have a choice, which is a choice really. We're taking the decision not to have choice over what, what we, um, how we want our lives to be. You have to take some action in that direction. You have to choose what goes in. So um, I'll sign off there. Just something to think about. Just wanted to create a discussion about Facebook because it's come up a few times recently. And I just find it really fascinating. I'm constantly observing my own relationship with Facebook. And it's a brilliant thing. It's, it's something I pop onto two, three times a day. And I look for the positive stuff. I look for the interesting stuff. I share stuff. I share gratitudes on there every day. It's a very powerful tool. But I'll make another video about gratitudes because it's a very powerful thing that successful people do and it's an attitude that you carry around so uh yeah take care everyone and i hope it's given you something to think about and talk about and i will catch you soon okay bye